here like this. Eight months, here's somebody coming in, one more person or so. Wonderful. It's good to see each other. It's good to know we're all still alive and coping with uh, the challenges that are before us. And we are stronger when we're together than we are when we're alone. And I think if there's a message that comes out of, uh, out of these pandemic, it's how much we really need each other. That's for sure. I have one announcement that I know of, and that is that our tree talk, our small group study that meets uh, typically on Wednesday morning, or we're going to meet this Wednesday morning at 9 o'clock. Uh, good enough. <laughs> the question I had was, it's the day after the election. Well, you know, what? we'll be in a, it'll be an interesting day. How's that? Anyway. <laughs> All right, 9 o'clock Wednesday morning, we meet out in this uh, center area out here. Oh, good, Edwin is here. Very good. So, and I'm really glad to see all you Presbyterians. I, I am amazed. Welcome. <laughs> we're going we're gonna to have a little bit of a celebration a little bit uh, later in our service over that. So, Lynn, I just... Uh, kind of pass on. I want to do what you asked me to do at a little bit different time. So, and I think you'll be okay with that. All right, my friends. We need to learn a new way of doing music because we cannot sing. Singing projects all of those moisture particles that have the potential to include the COVID virus. So we're going to do it a little bit differently. Our opening hymn is, O God, our help in ages past. And while you are wearing your mask, would you guys, let's just kind of read through this. Can we do that together? Let's see how that works. We will uh, experiment with some different things uh, so that prayerfully our worship time will be meaningful for us together. Please join with me as we read through our opening hymn. Oh, I, I love thy kingdom, Lord, the house of thine abode. The, huh? Well, how about that? We got to talk to the guy that uh, put all this together. <laughs> that would be me. All right. Oh, that's what I, yeah, all right. O oh God, our help in ages past, our hope for years to come, our shelter from the stormy blast, and our eternal home. O oh God, our help in ages past, our hope for years to come, be thou our guide while life shall last, and our eternal home. You know, I... Uh, I don't know how you guys are doing with this. It seems to me to be an incredibly stressful period of time because we got this crisis here and this crisis here and this one over here. You know, we're not the first mortals to go through periods that are as difficult as this. And that's when our faith, I think, becomes that anchor to help us to find some sense of peace in the midst of the turmoil. Those beautiful old hymns, those were people 100, 200, 300 years ago that passed that on to us. I'm going to try this with my mask on, but if you cannot hear me, raise your hand and I'll lower my mask. Come to our call to worship. Oh, give thanks to the Lord who is good. God's steadfast love endures forever. Let the redeemed of the Lord say to Say so, excuse me. Most astounding God, you lead us through deserts and grant us safe crossings. You save us from trouble and deliver us from distress. You satisfy our hunger and quench our thirst with righteousness and mercy. When we lose our way, you pull us back to you and overwhelm us with love. 
All honor and glory are yours, our master, our teacher, our friend. Amen. God turns the desert into pools of water and guides those who have gone astray. Let us confess to God the depth of our need that we may be saved from trouble. Will you please join with me in our prayer of confession? Lord God, only you are holy, yet we imagine that we are righteous, excusing our own faults, while pointing out those of others. We are quick to lay burdens upon our neighbors, but slow to help with their own. We take credit and give blame in spite of the grace you have shown to us. We are slow to show mercy. Forgive us, O God, and wash us clean, that we may serve you with joy and thanksgiving. Amen. Sisters and brothers, God has made a way where there was no way. In Christ Jesus, evil and death have been vanquished, and we live in a state of grace. Believe the gospel. In Christ Jesus, we are forgiven. Praise be his holy name. Amen. This is our time of joys and concerns. Have any celebrations out there? This looks like a celebration to me. Just glad to be here and to be together. Thank you all for coming. Truth of it is, we had absolutely no idea who or how many would show up today. Thank you. We are still remain church family, don't we? Yes, I, we I think it was a joy. We served about 30 kids last night at the trunk or treat. It went off real well. Linda's trunk was superbly decorated, as was Marla and Denise's. Mine, they got the candy. But, <laughs> but it was a very good, except for the wind. Yeah. It, was, it was a little chilly out there. <laughs> Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. Yes. Well, Linda. I'm home now from Tampa and Arkansas. Uh, my granddaughter, my great granddaughter, two dogs, baby dogs, and myself traveled 14 hours to get to Arkansas. And we didn't have any problem. The baby was wonderful. The what was? The baby. The baby. Ah. She only woke up to be fed. <laughs> So um, we had a pretty good weather once we got out of Tampa and as close as we got to Arkansas, we got rain. So um, they're in their house. Dakota joined them yesterday. So he's officially a part of Arkansas um, Little Rock Air Force Base. All right. So. Um, our daughters, two of our daughters came down last Sunday and we just really booked and opened up boxes for her and um, got Ellen's bed, bedroom all you know, settled and uh, it was just a fun time. We really had a good time. And Great. thank the Lord and all the prayers for traveling mercies because we had no problems whatsoever. So, but I'm back now for a while. All right. So, Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our prayers. prayers. Have any uh, concerns you'd like to lift up this morning? Yes, Betty. I have uh, my cousin Steve and his wife Martha. They have a little girl named Ava. She's a Amen. So, Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our prayers. I'd like to yes. please help me with three neighbors with a cold. Uh, Bob went into the hospital two days ago. 
go up via ambulance. And uh, DMA said there was nothing we could do. He had a heart aneurysm. And uh, he was immediately told to air back him to Springfield Memorial. They could not air back him because he was so critical. So they ended up putting him back in the ambulance, dragging him all the way to Springfield Memorial. <coughs> in ICU for about 72 hours. And uh, it was yesterday that his son, sister-in-law, daughter-in-law, told me that uh, he was coming out of ICU now and he recovered, recovered. Yeah, recovered and for three while. But he is still in the Catherine Street Memorial under observation more or less. But he had uh, it shot down on his wife that uh, and she has COPD. He, she he left on her twice that same evening and uh, she didn't know what to do. There was nobody there around her, no family. So uh, the history with both of them. All right. Was, uh, there's what, about 80, 84, both of them. And it, it kind of system. Yeah. So, so Lord in your mercy, hear, hear our prayers. prayers. So Edwin, how is Kay doing? Uh, better, I think. She's still on the How are you doing, brother? Yeah. We go through those things together, don't we? Yeah. So, Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. I'd like for you to continue to lift up Richard and Shirley Wallace. Uh, I know this is a challenging time, a difficult time. So, Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. And like to lift up uh, Barbie Gardner, who is uh, the graphic artist and a really neat w young woman uh, that works at First United Methodist Church. Uh, she has been diagnosed with breast cancer and is going through all of those difficult times. Uh, <laughs> Faye asked me to lift up the Welp family, W-E-L-P. They're out of Lincoln. Uh, people that she knows, there is a, they have a six-year-old child who has been diagnosed with inoperable brain cancer. And uh, so, Lord, in your mercy, hear their prayers. And uh, I'd like to lift up uh, Angela. Uh, Angela is going in for a biopsy this next week and, you know, help, uh, help all of us to just stay calm and... Uh, Pray that uh, the outcome of that will be positive and uh, we'll move into the future and just another experience of getting a little bit older. How about that? Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. Could I ask how William is doing in Spain? That's, that's good news. Very good. I just think about him every now and then. So keep him safe, Lord. Lord, in your mercy, yeah. hear our prayers. All right. I. We keep Sally Brown and her family in prayer. Yes. She, uh, she is at Vanderleaf Nursing Home in Mount Pulaski. I'm from the Lincoln area and served uh, two churches that a good number of our folks, uh, well, you know, that was my first appointment went to Vonderleith, very excellent uh, nursing home, much like uh, Hickory Point is, you know, good reputation, good caring folks. So, Lord, in your mercy, yeah. hear our prayers. I'd like to, uh, since, since we're not singing, I've kind of thought through some things that we might do 
in the middle of our worship where normally we would have a hymn. And there'll be some times that I will do some kind of a meditation on, the, on hymns. That would be really appropriate. But I'd like to introduce you to a way of meditating on scripture that is ancient. It's called Lexio Divine, divine reading. And the purpose of Lexio is not to engage our intellectual understanding of scriptures, but it's to begin to listen to what the scriptures say to our heart, to listen inside what comes up as we reflect and, and hear a scripture read. And I thought, uh, I thought a scripture for today that would be appropriate is the story where Jesus calms the storm. You remember? It's in each of the gospel stories. It was an important thing. And it just seems, I don't know where you guys are, but I'm finding this to be a time of storm. You know? How do we find what Paul calls that peace that passes all human understanding when the world around us is filled with turmoil, we have our own personal issues, we have those issues that are outside of ourselves that we're powerless to. So let me share a scripture, and I'm going to read through this probably three times. I want to invite you to sit quietly, close your eyes, and listen, and listen to the inside, not just the outside. One day, he got into a boat with his disciples, and he said to them, let us go across to the other side of the lake. So they put out, and while they were sailing, he fell asleep. The windstorm swept down on the lake, and the boat was filled with water, and they were in danger. They went to him and woke him up, shouting, Master, Master, we're perishing. And he woke up and rebuked the wind and the raging waves. They ceased and there was calm. He said to them, Where is your faith? They were afraid and amazed and said to one another, Who then is this? that he commands even the winds and the water, and they obey him. As I read this again, I invite you to listen to what it says to your heart. One day, he got into a boat with his disciples, and he said to them, let us go across to the other side of the lake. So they put out. And while they were sailing, he fell asleep. A windstorm swept down on the lake, and the boat was filled with water, and they were in danger. They went to him and woke him up, shouting, Master, Master, we are perishing. And he woke up and rebuked the wind and the raging waves. They ceased and there was calm. He said to them, where is your faith? They were afraid and amazed and said to one another, who then is this that he commands even the winds and the water and they obey him? As I read this a final time, does it speak to you in any part of your life? One day, he got into a boat with his disciples, and he said to them, 
let us go across to the other side of the lake. So they put out. And while they were sailing, he fell asleep. A windstorm swept down on the lake, and the boat was filled with water, and they were in danger. They went to him and woke him up, shouting, Master, Master, we are perishing. And he woke up and rebuked the winds and the raging waves. They ceased, and there was a calm. He said to them, Where is your faith? They were afraid and amazed and said to one another, Who then is this, that he commands even the winds and the water? And they obey him. Lord, only you are holy. Yep. Oops, sorry. By your spirit, O oh God, still our restless spirits and stop our ears. Let us hear your word that it may be at work in us. For the sake of Jesus Christ and those in whose names we pray. Amen. I love technology when it works. When it doesn't, it's a real pain. Okay. Uh, we will need that if we can for communion later. Sorry, guys. Our gospel reading this morning is from Matthew chapter 23, verses 1 through 12. Then Jesus said to the crowds and to his disciples, The scribes and the Pharisees sit on Moses' seat. Therefore, do whatever they teach you and follow it. But do not, do not do as they do, for they do not practice what they teach. They tie, heavy, tie up heavy burdens, hard to bear, and lay them on the shoulders of others. But they themselves are willing to lift a finger, unwilling to lift a finger to move them. They do all their deeds to be seen by others, for they make their 
phylacteries broad and their fringes long. They love to have the place of honor at banquets and the best seats in the synagogue and to be greeted with respect in the marketplace and to have people call them rabbi. But you are not to be called rabbi for you have one teacher and you are all students and call no one your father on earth. For you have one father, the one in heaven. Nor are you to be called instructors for you have one instructor, the Messiah. The best among you will be your servant. All who exalt themselves will be humbled and all who humble themselves will be exalted. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Now that's a fascinating scripture to come at what is now, today is actually All Saints Day, All Saints Sunday. And uh, we have this election coming up and it would seem that leadership would be something that we might talk about, right? After all, this is what this is about. It's about Jesus teaching his disciples what leadership in the kingdom of God is like. And I'm guessing that it doesn't take too much imagination for us to say leadership in the kingdom of God seems to be a whole lot different than it is out there in that world out there where might makes right and uh, the one with the most toys at the end wins and all that kind of concept, right? So, Jesus is inviting the church, which will become the church, I should say, into a different style of leadership. That's for a fact. I uh, thought how many stories there are, other teachings that Jesus had about humility and being the one who is the servant, the one that is the is the uh, who is the leader is actually the servant of all. So there's another story in Matthew 25 that I, I just I keep coming back to because it articulates in a brief place some really basic concepts out of the kingdom of God. You remember it's a story about the sheep and the goats, this uh, teaching, and in the end of it he says they they say to him. Then the righteous will answer him, Lord, when was it that we saw you hungry and gave you food or thirsty and gave you something to drink? And when was it that we saw you a stranger and welcomed you or naked and gave you clothing? And when was it that we saw you sick or in prison and visited you? And the king will answer them. Truly I tell you, just as you did it to the one of these, the least of my members of my family, you did it to me. How could there be a closer identity by God or Christ with those who are on the margins of the world? They are like family to him. And I, you know, I think of Mother Teresa in India who went intensely into the ghettos to do ministry. And you and I, friends, followers of Jesus, should have a heart, we are invited to have a heart as followers of Jesus, to reach out and to care and at the very least to pray for those who are on the margins, those who are struggling. You know, I sense a whole lot in our culture that we're, we've kind of forgotten about some of that stuff. And yet the Lord calls us to have a heart for those who are struggling and to engage in as many ways as we possibly can. Unfortunately, in our culture, we oftentimes think that means money. When in fact, I think that's not the case. Having a heart for those respect and dignity to be shown to those are some of the hungers of other people's soul just like they are our own. So this scripture here takes place during Holy Week. This is a primary teaching and very soon after this morning's gospel reading 
Jesus institutes the sacrament of Holy Communion, the Lord's Supper. And we know what a challenging whole evening that was. They were celebrating the Passover meal that was a critical primary uh, theology and belief of the Jewish people. And he took the symbolisms of Passover and he transformed them to about himself. He became the Paschal Lamb for you and for me and for all. You know? And we know what happened soon after that, right? <laughs> soon after that, he died on the cross for your sins and for mine. That's what we believe. And what we have received is this gift of grace and mercy. There's one other. So the Lord's Supper is uh, the story of the Lord's Supper and that part of the Holy Week is in each of the synoptic gospels, Matthew, Mark, and Luke. In the Gospel of John, there's a little bit different, uh, no, not a little bit, a great deal of different story told that has much of the same meaning. In the Gospel of John, Jesus washes the disciples' feet. You know? Talk about a humble experience. If any of you have ever had someone to wash your feet. I can tell you it's humbling for the receiver. Most certainly a humble experience for the giver, the doer. Only once or twice have I been in a setting where we practiced feet washing. The Lord is present. The Lord is present there, certainly. There are a few denominations for whom this is considered to be a sacrament, a holy moment. And it's not unusual for this sacrament, if you will, or this experience of foot washing to take place in many Protestant churches and Catholic churches during Holy Week in particular. So what does all of that say to us about leadership? about those who set the example, who bring people together for common cause. That talks about people having a humble heart, not elevating themselves above others. Know anybody like that? <laughs> that seems to be what is honored in our culture are those who have the big personality. It's not been that way in the church. I want to share a little story. There was a saint, a contemporary saint, if you will. In the last century, his name was Clarence Jordan. Clarence uh, earned a degree in agriculture, was a pretty well-educated person. Then he went on to seminary and learned how to study the ancient uh, languages and interpret the biblical text. You know, he had this wonderful gift but he never lost kind of a simple conviction that all of the scriptures were there to guide people in how they live their life. You know? It was more than this intellectual experience. It was an experience of the heart. So Jordan read in the book of Acts how those first Christians came together and they lived together and they shared everything in common. You know, it might be one of those things that today in our political language we might call socialism or something like that. Or communism, you know. Not this dictatorial thing, but where people shared the common goods that they had. So what Jordan did in an area of a town called Americus, Georgia, he formed this colony like where everybody was welcome to come and to live. Black and white, rich or poor. People came, they lived together, they began to share in common, they began to live out this New Testament vision of the kingdom of God. So this was in the 50s 
And you can imagine how, uh, shall we say controversial, would that be an adequate word? You know, the Ku Klux Klan would drive by and shoot into their buildings. They would burn crops just as they were ready to be harvested. They would, uh, you know, I can tell you, Jesus just has a way of t doing turmoil with the, the uh, status quo of how we live in this secular world out here. And that happened to uh, Jordan and his group. So there's a story. He said he, it wasn't so bad that he got all of this persecution, but it really upset him when his daughter, his daughter started getting the same kind of persecution at school. He says one day Clarence's daughter Jan came home from school in tears. He asked, honey, what's wrong? She said, oh, dad, a lot of the kids are mean, but there's this one boy named Bob Speck. Every time Bob sees me coming down the hall, he comes up and knocks me down. He throws my books down in the hallway. He says the ugliest words to me. Jordan says, Jan, you have long fingernails. Why don't you just scratch his eyes out? She says, well, I thought about that, but I heard you say in your sermon that Jesus said we're supposed to love our enemy. So I thought I couldn't scratch his eyes out. He said, well, I'll tell you what I'm going to do. Tomorrow I'm going to go to the school and I'm going to ask Jesus to excuse me from being a Christian for about 15 minutes while I beat the daylights out of Bob Speck. Then Chad said, oh, Daddy, you can't do that. And he said, why not? You can't be excused from being a Christian for 15 minutes. Ha. Huh. Do we live into this? Do we follow the Lord of life? He continually invites us, follow me. And to follow him means to begin to live this life that is different than the one of out there. This is one of those stories. Love your enemies. Pray for them. Doggone, that's hard, isn't it? Anybody having good luck with that? You know? Not easy. There's another story I'd like to share. A guy named Frederick Buckner, who's been a very well-known preacher and scholar in the last uh, century, raised the question, could a servant come to be among the greatest? Could someone who is the servant become the greatest in the organization? Buckner says he thinks it's possible. He tells this story of the biblical slave Onesimus, whom St. Paul once met in jail. Buckner tells how Paul writes a letter to Philemon as a request that the master take away, take the runaway slave back and that he treat him as a brother in Christ. He concludes, it's not known whether or not Philemon took the hint and let Onesimus, Nemesis, return to be the old saint's comfort for what was, left, what was left of him in life. But there's at least one good reason for believing that such was the case. Years later, when Paul was long since dead, another saint was in jail by the name of Ignatius. The bishop of Ephesus had sent some friends to visit him and Ignatius wrote, asking if, the couple, if a couple of them could be allowed to stay. Ignatius in his letter used some of the same language that Paul had used in his letter to Philemon, almost as if he was trying to remind him of something. And what was the name of the bishop he wrote to? It was Onesimus. Yeah? So, saints do arise, don't they? And it begins, I think, with a humble heart. I, uh, I think, you know, here we have come together as two congregations, two different denominations. But I'm guessing that those founders of both of our denominations, John and Charles Wesley, John Calvin, 
You know, they were people who were on a spiritual journey to grow in this relationship that God offered them. What we get today are the writings which sound so much like head stuff, but the truth of it is their journey was a heart movement that they then wrote down and shared as they were growing. There is not a doubt in my mind that those who were founders of these movements had that humble heart that was open to the God that created all that is. Humble hearts, not arrogant, not rude, not demanding its own self. Does that begin to sound like 1 Corinthians 13? God is love. I got one thing I want to share. Lynn, uh, Lynn sent me a nice email this morning that I think is most appropriate. When we think about the saints of our churches, those who have given us much, certainly in our context we can be thankful for the generations that came before us because we're sitting here on a blustery morning in a beautiful sanctuary in a very challenging time, secure in the relationship that we have with the Lord of life, secure in a sense of church family. It was people that came before us that shared their gift with us that we can now share with others. This is what Lynn shared with me this morning. She says, Today on this All Saints Day, we see these new claws and banners hanging in the sanctuary and fellowship room. These come from the Presbyterian Church congregation, artifacts of our cultural history. The claws decorated our stage during our plays, highlighted the backdrop while we taught our children the stories of Jesus, maybe even draped our communion table as we communed together in his saving grace. Though many of our church's ancestors have joined the Lord in heaven, we remember them and give our thanks to them for teaching us the scriptures and raising us and our families with one Lord's love for us. We hang these claws and banners in our new congregational space, in our new home, and we bring our faith, hope, and love flowing down to us and from us, from many hands and hearts of the saints who came before us. And for that we can say, Amen. 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 Thank you, Lord, for all those good folks that came before us, that shared the faith, that walked a path so much similar to ours. You know, the only difference is the technology, guys. We're walking the same path many others did for centuries before us. Thank you. All right. It didn't come back on, did it, Angela? There we go. That's what I'm looking for. All right. First of all, before we start, I'd like to share with you that we are going to use these cups. Okay? They are here for the purpose of safety. Now, there are, well, we've all kind of seen something similar to this when you go to Casey's and you open up the... Uh, half and half or the creamer to put in your coffee. So this is very similar to that with one difference. On the edge that you lift up, there's actually two flaps there. One is just a very thin, a very thin piece, okay? And when you pull it back underneath is the communion wafer, all right? And then we, so we will do the communion wafer first, and then we will do the, the grape juice, the wine. And we'll just peel it back the next layer, and then you drink the grape juice. Okie dokie. You guys with me? Yeah. The first part, getting the first one off is a trick. The second one is easy. It's just, uh, 
it's a bit of a challenge. All right. So will you please join with me, my friends, in our liturgy for this morning. The Lord be with you. And with you. Lift up your hearts. Look at them now. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Almighty God, Creator of heaven and earth. You formed us in your image and breathed into us the breath of life. When we turned away and our love failed, your love remained steadfast. You delivered us from captivity made covenant to be our sovereign God, and spoke to us through your prophets, who look for that day when justice shall roll down like waters, and righteousness like an ever-flowing stream. When nation shall not lift up sword against nation, neither shall they learn war any more. And so with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn, Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy are you, and blessed is your Son, Jesus Christ. Your Spirit anointed him to preach good news to the poor, to proclaim release to the captives, and recovery of sight to the blind, and set at liberty those who are oppressed, and to announce that the time had come when you would save your people. He healed the sick, fed the hungry, and ate with sinners. By the baptism of his suffering, death, and resurrection, you gave birth to your church, delivered us from slavery to sin and death, and made with us a new covenant by water and the Spirit. At his ascension, you exalted him to sit and reign with you at your right hand. The night in which he gave himself up for us, the Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks to you, broke the bread, gave it to his disciples and said, Take and eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. When the supper was over, he took the cup, gave thanks to you, gave it to his disciples, and said, Drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And so in remembrance of these your mighty acts in Christ Jesus, We offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here and on these gifts of bread and wine. Make them be for us the body and blood of Christ that we may be for the world, the body of Christ, redeemed by his blood. By your Spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world, until Christ comes in his final victory, and we feast at his heavenly banquet. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in your holy church. All honor and glory is yours, almighty God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. And now, with the confidence of children of God, let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. 
Amen. Because there is one loaf, we who are many are one body, for we all partake of the one loaf. Bread which we break is a sharing in the body of Christ. And the cup over which we give thanks is a sharing in the blood of Christ. So I invite you, my friends, I think I got to take off this. This is the body of Christ broken for you. And this, my friends, is the blood of Christ shed for your sins and for mine. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Would you please join with me in prayer? Eternal God, we give you thanks for this holy mystery in which you have given yourself to us. Grant that we may go into the world in the strength of your spirit to give ourselves to others. In the name of Jesus the Christ, who is our Lord. Amen. Amen. All right. Do we have a hymn? I love thy kingdom, Lord. All right. Let's do as we did before. I don't know. Uh oh. I got loud, didn't I? <laughs> Let's leave that on the outside. Have you guys kind of uh, said the words along with me? Is that how that we've done that with the hymns? I love thy kingdom, Lord, the house of thine abode. The church, our blessed Redeemer, saved by his own precious blood. Sure as thy truth shall last, to Zion shall be given. The brightest glories earth can yield, and brighter bliss of heaven. The bliss of heaven. What will it be like, you know? My friends, lead a life worthy of the Lord, who calls us into the realm of glory and shows us the way of abundant life. May the blessing of God, Father, Mother, Teacher, Friend, go with you this day and every day until we meet in glory. Amen. So I'm going to invite you, wear your mask, practice social distancing, stay safe. We got a long period of time and we want to stay healthy so that we can gather again and celebrate again that God is alive and well in our time and in our place. Prayerfully, we're going to be about the kingdom's work. Be sure to vote if you haven't already. Amen? Amen. Go in peace, my friends. Thank you. Glad you're here.